Shall we give it another um, minute? There are still a few people um, drifting in. Okay, numbers look to be settling down. Is, um, are you happy to um, start soon, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, it's a big pleasure to have um, Steve Evans again um, to talk to us. Um, this, so this is the second of three lectures. The third one will be on at this time on Thursday. Um, so thank you, Steve. Go ahead. Great, thanks very much, James. And uh, so uh, uh, let me say um, thanks again uh, to the, the organizers for organizing uh, uh, this uh, series of, uh, uh, you know, the summer school series. That's just a, a great idea in these times. Uh, so uh, I won't um, sort of attempt um, to, uh, go over uh, all of the, the, the terminology um, that I built up uh, in uh, the, the first lecture. Um, let's just remember um, that we um, were talking, when we talked about binary trees, um, we were talking about uh, rooted binary trees um, so that meant that every individual had zero, one or two children. And we distinguished between um, the left and the right child, um, even when there was only one child. And so uh, that um, gave us this uh, sort of encoding of uh, uh, vertices in the tree um, by uh, finite binary words. Um, and now we're going to look at um, particular types of uh, binary trees, which are finite rooted and we'll call them full binary trees, um, which are finite rooted binary trees in which every vertex has zero or two children. And um, the number of such trees with n plus one leaves, um, and in because of our assumption that everybody has zero or two children, that means that we have to have two n plus one vertices, is the the famous Catalan uh, number, uh, uh, which an expression for the Catalan numbers given there, and uh, you know. Uh, as most of you probably know, Catalan numbers show up in uh, uh, all over the place. Richard Stanley has this book. Um, I should have uh, looked at it uh, before today's lecture, but you know, there's something uh, you know, well over a hundred instances of you know quite different looking combinatorial objects um, that are counted by the Catalan numbers. And um, in 1985, Remy gave an algorithm which um, generates a sequence of uh, uh, finite rooted full binary trees UN such that UN's uniformly distributed um, on um, the set of uh, such guys with N plus one leaves. And uh, I describe in words, um, this uh, uh, algorithm here. Um, but uh, let's just um, from this slide take away um, that it starts um, uh, with U1 being the, the binary tree um, that consists of the, the, the root, uh, the empty word and um, uh, its left child 
zero and its right child one. So it's the, the unique finite rooted full binary tree that has three vertices. And then there's a description in uh, words here, um, but rather than um, go through that, uh, it's probably easier if I just um, explain it with pictures in the following few slides here. So um, here's a, 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 a typical iteration of, of Ramey's algorithm. So um, we're here at um, some stage in, and uh, the first step in an iteration is to pick a vertex um, let's call that vertex V uniformly at random. So uh, all the vertices, um, including the leaf, uh, the leaves and the, the root possibly, um, uh, we pick um, um, that at random. And then we um, take a pair of scissors and snip off um, the subtree rooted at V and then um, where V had been, um, we attach a copy of that little um, two-leaf tree um, uh, to the place where V had been. So that uh, little tree uh, with two leaves that we call Aleph, um, uh, the tree that's in uh, with dashed edges here, um, we attach that um, to where V had been. Um, and then uh, the final step in the iteration is to get us back to having a tree, um, we need to reattach uh, the, the subtree rooted at V that we cut off. And we do that um, by reattaching the subtree rooted at V um, to one of the two leaves in the copy of, of Aleph. Um, so uh, we could have attached um, V here, or we could have attached it here. And uh, we do that from those two possibilities with probability a half each. And of course, we uh, relabel the vertices appropriately. And the, the solid circle is the new location of V. And um, just for some terminology, the, the open circles, um, we'll call them uh, the clones of, of V. Uh, we won't really use that terminology. Um, it'll just be sort of used in um, describing how um, one can get at the forward transition probabilities uh, for this Markov chain. Uh, and so some terminology that we'll need for um, describing the forward transition probabilities of this Markov chain is the notion of an embedding of a finite rooted full binary tree into another one. So if we've got a finite full binary tree S and another finite full binary tree T, then we say that an embedding of S into T is a map um, from the vertex set of S into the vertex set of T. So it's um, an injection of the vertex set of S into the vertex set of T, such that the image of a leaf of S is a leaf of T. So the, the leaves of S are mapped into the leaves of T. And uh, we sort of preserve uh, uh, the, the order relations in the tree. So uh, if uh, U and V are vertices of S such that um, V is below and to the left of U, then the image of V in T is below and to the left of the image of U in T. And uh, the same for um, if uh, uh, V is below and to the right of, of U, um, then its image will be below and to the right of U in T. 
and we'll write NST for the number of ways of embedding S into T. So let's just have a, a, a picture here. Um, let's suppose that S is uh, this tree um, that we've been calling Aleph uh, that has just two leaves and um, T is this full binary tree um, that has four leaves and seven vertices, then here's um, uh, a, um, uh, the, the collection of embeddings of all the ways of uh, embedding uh, S uh, into T. Okay, so here's all the ways that we can set um, S into T um, so that uh, leaves of S uh, 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 are mapped into leaves of, of T. So this is what we mean by an embedding. Okay, so is the, um, the concept clear there? Okay, so we, you know, we're allowed to break um, S apart, but the important thing is that um, leaves get mapped um, to, to leaves and um, the sort of order structure uh, kind of is maintained. Um, you know, A was below and to the left of C in S, and A is below and to the left of C um, in um, T, okay, in the, in the embedding. And similarly, you know, A is below and to the left of, of C in this embedding and so on in all the others. And a little observation um, that, of course, the, the embeddings of S into T are uniquely determined by the images of the leaves of the S, the leaves of S, um, just because if X and Y are vertices of S, then the images of the most recent common ancestor of X and Y and S must be the the most recent common ancestor in T of the images of X and Y. So there's, um, you know, a certain rigidity uh, in this story um, that if you know where the leaves go, then you know where everything else has to go. Okay, so the reason why we introduced this um, notion of embedding is that it um, shows up uh, in uh, the formula uh, for the, the transition probabilities of the Ramey chain, the forward transition probabilities of the Ramey chain. So suppose that S and T, T uh, are two trees that can appear as states of the, the Ramey chain. S has M plus one uh, uh, leaves, T has M plus N, plus one leaves, so uh, uh, T um, can appear after uh, N further steps of the chain. Uh, then uh, the probability that we transition from S to T in N steps is um, given um, by this formula uh, here. And uh, you know, this is uh, sort of uh, a, a good exercise uh, to uh, figure out uh, why uh, this is so. Uh, I'll just uh, give a, a bit of a, a hint. You know, if we, we condition on the, the state of the chain at um, time m, um, then the various vertices at time um, m plus n, um, uh, well, uh, you know, some of those will be um, uh, what we'll call clonal descendants of clonal descendants of vertices at time m, if um, uh, their uh, vertices at time m or clones of them, or clones of clones, uh, et cetera. And so we can decompose the uh, tree 
uh, time n plus n into connected pieces according to um, uh, clonal descent. And so um, we break apart the tree at time n plus n uh, into uh, uh, pieces like this um, on a skeleton uh, that's given by the tree at time m. And then sitting at the bottom of each of those pieces um, are the uh, uh, vertices from the tree that was around at, at time m. And then uh, it's uh, a little bit of thought to see that the number of clonal descendants of the um, uh, 2m plus 1 vertices is the result of n steps in a polyurn of, of a certain type um, where uh, you uh, at each stage, balls are chosen uniformly at random, just as you always do in a polyurone, but they're replaced along with two balls of the same color, right? Because, you know, you put this little copy of Aleph in there, so you have two clones um, put in. And uh, when you condition on the number of clonal descendants, the binary trees of clonal descendants are independent and uniformly distributed. Okay, um, because you've got sort of Remy's algorithm sort of run, um, you know, a sort of hierarchical um, uh, number of Remy's algorithms going on. And condition on the trees of clonal descendants, the ancestors from TM uh, are located at independent and uniformly chosen leaves of their respective trees of clonal descendants. And so if you put all those pieces together, um, you you end up uh, with this formula here after some some algebra and <clears throat> uh, the way that we'll um, the most important way that we'll use that is for deriving the backwards in time transition probabilities for just one step is that um, if we just go um, backwards in time from time n plus one back to time n, then um, the probability um, going backwards in time from a tree T to a tree S is just one over n plus two times the number of ways of embedding um, S uh, into T, which uh, we can say in words as, as follows that a backward evolution proceeds by picking a, a leaf uh, uniformly at random, delete the chosen leaf and its sibling, which may or may not be a leaf. And if the sibling's not a leaf, then um, the deletion will have produced a gap in the tree. And so you close up that gap. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you, you're done. So uh, let's just draw a picture of that. So here's the backward dynamics and duration of the backward dynamics. You pick a leaf in the tree uniformly at random, cut out the chosen leaf and its sibling, and then close up the gap. And that's the way that this guy um, goes backwards in time. Okay. Um, so uh, one last uh, uh, tree valued chain, um, and then we'll uh, sort of start uh, connecting these things together. Well, this will all ready be a connection because um, this will be a connection um, with radix sort. So remember that the radix sort algorithm is um, this process by which um, we feed in um, uh, IID 
uh, uh, infinite binary words distributed according to some arbitrary distribution. And um, at the nth stage, we've got n such words and we build a tree that consists of the um, sort of minimal prefixes of those words um, that um, distinguishes between them. Okay, so maybe let's just go back and remind you of, whoops, I'm having trouble. Ah, why? You know, that's no, not it. Uh, yeah, this thing that had the very small print on it. So, um, you know, if our three infinite words um, uh, uh, started this way, started with 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, um, then uh, the tree that we would have built is this guy um, where um, it has um, the leaves 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1. That's tree with three leaves that consist of the minimal prefixes that are necessary um, to distinguish um, those three inputs from each other. Okay, and um, we just have this tree that's going to be um, growing as we throw in um, more and more um, independent draws from our underlying um, uh, distribution. Okay, so, uh, and uh, the, the virtue of radix sort to computer scientists is um, that if we walk around the, the, the outside of the radix sort tree, um, we do a depth for, for search that it visits the leaves in the lexicographic order of the corresponding infinite binary input words. But the radix sort tree stores more information than is necessary for that task. And um, in particular, if you delete the vertices with a single child in the radix sort tree and close up the gaps and then do a depth first search, um, you'll achieve the, the same result. And the, the, the tree that you produce by deleting the vertices with a single child and closing up the gaps, um, that's called um, uh, uh, the Patricia tree. And Patricia is an acronym uh, for practical algorithm to retrieve information coded in alphanumeric. And so, uh, so uh, Patricia um, has the property that um, it produces full binary trees that every non-leaf vertex um, has two children. And so here um, uh, we'll see the, the relationship between a radix sort tree um, for three infinite binary inputs and the corresponding Patricia tree. Okay, so here's the, the radix sort tree for these three binary inputs that we've seen before. And what you do is, you know, there's two vertices um, that have a single child. And what you do is you cut this one out, you cut that one out, um, throw them away, um, and uh, you're left with this tree here, um, and then you just do a, a relabeling of that guy. And um, you're 
left with um, this this tree here, and this process um, of uh, removing the the, the single um, child vertices and relabeling is called the Patricia contraction. A little bit of notation here. Um, we'll let S bar um, be the, the set of finite rooted binary trees that can appear as Patricia trees. Um, so we've observed that every vertex has zero or two children. Um, S bar N um, be um, uh, those such trees that have N leaves. So S bar one just consists of the trivial tree with a single vertex, um, the empty set. And uh, we've already talked um, about the, the Patricia contraction. It's the thing that turns um, a, a radix sort tree um, into a, a Patricia tree. Um, by deleting vertices with a single child and closing up the gaps. And of course, it maintains the, the, the number of leaves. And um, there's, of course, a natural pruning operation that prunes a leaf um, from a, a Patricia tree. So if we've got a Patricia tree and a, a a leaf, uh, and that should say T bar there, and uh, a leaf of T bar, then um, the, the tree kappa bar T bar V, which we obtain um, uh, by pruning um, uh, V, is obtained by um, uh, removing uh, V and its sibling and closing up the gap if there is one. And uh, we observe that T bar, if T bar is the Patricia tree for infinite binary inputs, Z1 up to Zn plus one, and Yn plus one is the leaf of, and this again should be um, T bar, is um, uh, Yn plus one is the leaf of T bar corresponding to the, the input Zn plus one. Um, then this pruning is the Patricia tree for the input Z1 up to Zn. Okay, so um, this pruning operation um, corresponds to um, uh, getting rid of one of the inputs. Okay, so here's graphically what the pruning looks like. What we do is um, uh, we uh, remove this leaf and we remove its sibling and um, close up the gap. So this guy here gets shunted up um, to there. And a little bit of notation. Um, the Patricia process is what we get um, by building successive Patricia trees for IID input Z1, Zn, so on, um, with um, IID inputs, you know, infinite binary inputs with common distribution nu. And just observe you know, trivially that this Patricia process is nothing other than what we get by taking the radix sort process for the infinite binary inputs generated from the distribution nu and applying the Patricia contraction to them. Another um, little bit of notation Let's let gamma um, be um, the uh, product of infinitely many copies of the measure pi, where pi is um, uh, uh, 
uh, Bernoulli a half half uh, measure on on zero one. So gamma is fair coin tossing measure on sequence space. And uh, let's for simplicity call Rn uh, the radix sort chain uh, for um, this measure gamma and R bar n, um, the Patricia process um, for um, this measure gamma. Okay, so um, one can show that the, the Patricia process um, for any input distribution is, is Markov. And uh, that the, uh, it's actually sort of quite hard to write down in any kind of simple closed form way what the forward transition probabilities are, but the backward transition probabilities uh, are, are quite simple. Um, they're just given um, by this uh, formula here, which in words says that the Patricia process evolves backward in time by picking a leaf uniformly at random and um, uh, uh, pruning it off. And so um, something quite surprising happens that the, the backward transition probabilities of the Patricia process are the same um, for all new. And remember, we observed that this was the same for the radix sort processes, that the backward transition probabilities of the radix sort processes, they also didn't depend on the input distribution new. And also the, the pruning process here, I, I should have emphasized this, the pruning process um, is exactly the same as uh, uh, what happened. This, this backward transition mechanism is exactly the backward transition mechanism for the Ramey chain. Pick a leaf at random and take it in its sibling and delete them and close up the gap. Okay, so what we have is that the, the Ramey chain starts with this tree, a Patricia process starts with this tree, but apart from that difference, they have the same backward transition probabilities, which are pick a leaf, delete it and its sibling and close up the gap. So they're really quite different um, uh, looking chains, um, but they have the same backward transition probabilities. Okay, so we've introduced a whole plethora of different chains, the um, binary search tree chain, the digital search tree chain, or even before that, uh, the um, uh, polyazone, uh, just fair coin tossing, uh, the, the radix sort tree chain, uh, uh, the, the Patricia process, Ramey's um, uh, chain. And they all have um, these common features, okay? So all of these are a, a, a Markov chain. Um, here, my Markov chain, I've got indexed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Some of the chains, um, uh, are more naturally indexed by one, two, three, four, and so on. But of course, that doesn't matter. Um, that's just a, a notational difference. Um, and they're chains with countable state spaces that I'll generically call E. Um, but the, the big thing here is that the, the state spaces are being partitioned into disjoint pieces that I'll call E0, E1, and E2. And E0 has just consisted of a single distinguished um, state E. 
And um, the big thing is that transitions have only been possible from uh, state EN to state EN plus one. Okay, you've only been able to go from uh, trees within plus one leaves to trees within plus two leaves, for example. Um, you know, all of our chains have had um, uh, that kind of feature. So in particular, um, if you start the, the, the chain out in the distinguished state, then at time n, um, you're necessarily in um, the subset of states en. Okay, so just by looking at um, what state you're in, you know what time it is. And so finally, we get to talk about bridges. And so a bridge for the type of Markov chain we're considering is a Markov chain with the same state space as X, initial state E, and the same backward transition probabilities as X. Um, I went over that a bit quickly. So we're in, that's what a bridge is. It uh, starts out in E and the same backward transition probabilities X. So the big question is, what are all the bridges for a given Markov chain? Now, clearly, um, a, a, a mixture of two bridges is a bridge. You know, a convex combination of two bridges is a bridge. So um, uh, so what we want to know is um, what are all the extremal bridges for a given Markov chain? What are all the bridges that can't be written as a convex combination as of um, other um, bridges? And it's a fact, you know, a very general fact, um, far beyond sort of the particular types of chains that we're looking, um, which goes back to uh, work of people like uh, Fulmer and, and, and Dinkin in the, the 70s. Um, and that implies that a bridge is extremal if and only if it has an almost surely trivial tail sigma field. So we're interested in what are the bridges that have almost surely trivial tail sigma fields? So what are the guys that have the same um, uh, backward uh, uh, transition dynamics as the processes that we're interested in that have almost surely trivial tail sigma fields. So recall the simplest radix sort train, chain um, that's built with input distribution fair coin tossing. Um, we observed that um, uh, if we look at another radix sort chain, that that's a bridge for R. This guy has the same uh, um, uh, uh, backward in time transition dynamics. That like all uh, the radix sort chains have the same backwards in time transition dynamics. Um, and all of these guys have trivial tail sigma fields. That's just clear from um, the Hewitt Savage 0 1 law, right? Because they're built in, any, um, in a symmetric way um, from uh, uh, IID um, inputs. And so they'll have trivial tail sigma fields. And um, so uh, we see that these bridges are extremal. And in fact, we'll show um, later that they're the only extremal bridges for R. Okay, so uh, we have a, a, a full characterization of the, the extremal bridges for the, the radix sort chain. So it's natural to conjecture that there's the same story for the Patricia chains. We've seen that the Patricia chains are all bridges um, for the, the Ramey chain um, or equivalently the simplest Patricia chain uh, bar. Modulo this fact that 
um, the, the, the Ramey chain and the Patricia chain um, just have slightly different um, initial conditions. So, you know, once you um, uh, take care of that. So this result that we just saw on the previous slide for the simplest radix sort chain suggests that all the extremal bridges for the Ramey chain or the simplest Patricia chain, that they should be um, of, of this form here, that they should be just um, uh, uh, Patricia sort, uh, Patricia chains for different input distributions. And that conjecture is resoundingly false. And here's a um, counter example. Um, consider the, the following Ramey bridge. So here's what the value at time n of this bridge looks like. So at time n, um, the tree consists of a, a, a tree that's a single spine um, that just moves left or right as it goes down according to successive tosses of a fair coin. And then you just hang leaves off that guy so that you have a full binary tree. Okay, so that's a way of building a, 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 a value of... Um, uh, uh, a Ramey bridge at time n, a possible value at time n, right? Now, if I um, look at this guy here and then um, run it backwards in time just from this state according to the, the Ramey dynamics, um, I'll stay in this um, uh, uh, class of trees, right? Because what am I going to do? I'm going to pick a leaf uniformly at random and remove it and its sibling. And that'll be another one of these zigzag trees, right? That moves left or right with a spine that moves left or right according to tosses of a fair coin. Okay, so by the Kolmogorov extension um, theorem, I can build a whole... Um, uh, chain uh, at times all the way out to infinity so that at every time n, I see um, a, a zigzag tree like this um, that moves um, left or right um, uh, as we go down according to tosses of a fair coin. And the way that you go from time n plus one um, back to time n is by um, picking a, a, a leaf uniformly at random and removing it and a sibling and closing up the gap. Okay. And um, if you sit down and think about it for a while, you'll see that this is certainly not something um, that's uh, uh, built um, by looking at the um, Patricia um, chain for IID um, inputs. It just doesn't look anything like what you'd get um, from the, the, the Patricia chain uh, for, for IID inputs that such a tree would behave very differently. So um, we're left with the, the question, what are the extremal bridges for the Ramey chain T or equivalently the simplest Patricia process R bar. So let's start working our way um, towards delineating what all of those guys are. So first of all, we're going to introduce um, this way of um, taking um, the successive um, values, the successive trees, um, that appear um, in uh, uh, the uh, Ramey's chain and labeling the, the leaves of those guys. Um, so at time in, 
uh, there's n plus one leaves and we're going to label them um, uh, you know, a bijective way with the numbers one up to n plus one. Okay, so, um, so you know, clearly um, what we can do is, you know, using um, Kolmogorov's extension theorem is that we can build a, a Markov process um, Tn infinity tilde um, such that, oh, I should have said what Tn infinity is. Tn infinity is, um, that's, uh, sorry about that. Tn infinity is a bridge um, for Ramy. Tn infinity is a Ramy bridge. So if Tn infinity is a Ramy bridge, um, we can build a corresponding um, Markov process Tn infinity such that um, at time n, Tn infinity is a leaf labeled binary tree with its n plus one leaves labeled by n plus one, such that if we remove the labels of Tn infinity tilde, we get back Tn infinity. And the way that, and Tn infinity tilde is just a uniform labeling of Tn infinity um, by um, uh, the numbers one up to n plus one. And moreover, when we go backwards in time from n plus one to time n, Tn plus one infinity is transformed into Tn tilde infinity in the following way, the leaf labeled n plus two is deleted along with its sibling. If the leaf labeled n plus two is also a leaf, then the common parent, which is now a leaf is assigned a sibling's label. Okay, so we make the labeling um, accord um, with the deletion process. So it's always um, the highest number leaf that gets picked to be deleted. So we make our labeling um, match um, the, uh, the, the leaf removal process. So it's clear that we can um, uh, do that. You know, we can sort of do this up to a finite time, you know, sort of, um, and, you know, by just going up to a finite time in, uh, label the tree uniformly and then work our way um, backwards. And because we can do that for any n, Kolmogorov um, guarantees that we can do it for all n. And now we want to use this labeling um, to build uh, an infinite binary tree-like structure, which in some sense um, has n uh, playing the role of its leaves. Um, so if I and J in N, the labels of two leaves of um, Tn infinity um, that are represented by um, the binary finite binary words U1 up the UK and V1 up the VL, then uh, what we do um, is um, put um, square brackets IJN um, to be uh, the binary word that corresponds to the most recent common ancestor of these guys um, in the tree um, TN infinity, right? So here's I, here's J, and here's their, their most recent common ancestor. Okay, so we're just um, uh, keeping track of their, their most recent common ancestor. 
Okay, and um, little obser, um, uh, 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 vation is um, that we can define an equivalence class on the Cartesian product. Uh, n cross n by declaring that, um, oh, I don't know what that period there is, um, the two pairs are equivalent if and only if um, their most recent common ancestor um, is the same um, for, for some um, n and uh, hence all in such that, um, you know, it uh, uh, makes sense to talk about the most recent common ancestor being in the tree. So we'll um, write this uh, angle brackets ij for the equivalence class of the pair ij. So um, we'll think of this angle brackets ij as being the most recent common ancestor of the leaves ij and they're sort of the interior vertices of the tree like of a tree like object. So they're sort of we see that the the identity of the um, this most recent common ancestor kind of persists um, you know as n gets larger and larger as the um, number of leaves um, that we're you know, the, the tree that stuff is getting embedded in um, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we can define a, a, a partial order on uh, the set of equivalence classes um, uh, by uh, uh, saying, uh, that uh, one equivalence class, uh, one equivalence class is below and to the left of uh, another equivalence class. If, well, the obvious thing happens if we have um, representatives um, of those equivalence classes such that the corresponding binary words um, for um, some n uh, look like this. You know, here's uh, uh, the the actual vertex in a tree of the most common, most recent common ancestor at time n. Is this binary word? Here's the most recent common ancestor at time n. Is a binary word that starts out the same way, then you move to the left with a zero and then continue on a little while um, passing, uh, you know, zigzagging down, um, following um, the, the instructions given by um, these binary letters. And as I said, we um, interpret this ordering uh, as the, the, this vertex here being below and to the left of um, this vertex here. And um, it requires some thought to see um, that this partial order is actually well-defined. It doesn't depend on um, the, the representatives of the, the equivalence class or um, the choice of n here. Okay, you can define a partial order um, down and to the right, below and to the right in exactly the same way. And a third partial order just below, which means either below and to the left or below and to the right. Okay, I realize this slide's got a lot on it, but it's quite um, trivial, the stuff that's on here. This equivalence relation and the partial orders below and to the left, below and to the right and below have the, the following properties. First of all, um, 
uh, IJ is equivalent to JI, so that's just saying the, the most recent common ancestor of IJ is the same as the most recent common ancestor of JI. And this just says um, uh, that you either have um, uh, the equivalence class of II is either below and to the left of IJ or um, below and to the right of um, I. Uh, and so, sorry, either I is below and to the left of the most recent common ancestor of IJ and J is below and to the right or vice versa. Okay, so, you know, you have, you know, for the most recent common ancestor of I and J, either I is below and to the right and J below and I is below and to the left and J and is below and to the right or vice versa. And then uh, we have this um, uh, triplet property, uh, which I'll uh, is on the, the next slide here, which says um, that uh, if you have any three vertices, um, then uh, uh, two of them have a most recent common ancestor, which is below um, uh, the most recent common ancestor of the other two pairs. And so either this happens or this happens or this happens where we're disregarding the left and right um, distinction. So, you know, all of these things are things that you expect in a tree. Uh, <clears throat> um, D here says that um, if a vertex is below and to the left of, if KL is below and to the left of IJ, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, yeah, then um, uh, KL can't be below and to the right of IJ, right? Um, and, uh, you know, this happens if and only if either of these guys happen. So, you know, that's the only way that that can happen. And then the last one says, if you go down left and then you go either right or left, then you're um, going down left uh, eventually. Okay, so they're all things that you um, expect to hold um, in a, a, an ordered um, a binary tree, but they're happening in um, this kind of actually sort of strange um, sort of infinite object. Remember, this is a guy um, with uh, infinitely um, many uh, leaves. It's got leaves indexed by um, the, the natural numbers. So if we've got a set, um, an equivalence relation, um, partial orders um, on the equivalence classes that satisfy these axioms, um, we'll call it a digendritic system. Um, if these axioms hold, um, and uh, digendritic comes from the Greek for um, two and trees, because we've got a tree with um, you know, sort of basically two partial orders on it. And uh, it's sort of quite an interesting exercise, actually, to show that a digendritic system with a finite label set um, is really just a rooted full binary tree with its leaves labeled by N in disguise. Okay, and I'll just... Um, uh, uh, want to uh, just take up a, a little more time. Uh, no, oh, no, I 
actually run out of time. So um, what we're um, sort of now um, needing to um, sort of show uh, is uh, really that uh, any uh, uh, Ramey bridge um, corresponds to a, a, a random didendritic system with um, specific properties, um, uh, specific symmetry properties. And then we're going to um, actually prove that any uh, such random didendritic system is given uh, uh, by a, uh, can be represented in terms of uh, a, um, uh, a real tree, sampling from a real tree. That's going to be uh, the, the, the final uh, goal, which will um, involve using the, the Aldous Hoover Kallenberg theory of um, uh, e sort of exchangeable arrays. And so that's the, um, uh, what we'll uh, leave to do on, on Thursday. Okay, so I didn't get quite as far as I'd um, hoped to um, today, um, but um, we should be able to finish off on, on Thursday. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you very much, Steve. Um, please, everyone, feel free to unmute yourselves and um, we can thank Steve very much indeed. <laughs> Um, would anyone like to ask a question at this point? You can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat if you prefer. I will establish streaming as well.